Hello and welcome to this video all about LXL GCSE Computer Science Paper 1. So I'm going to give a, a fairly brief overview of this exam and introduce my set of videos on it. Now, as you quite possibly know, if you're studying this yourself and you're already down the line, there are two exams which make up this qualification. So when you finish GCSE, you would have done two exams, which are worth exactly the same, 50% of your grade, uh, although the length of the exams do differ. And Paper 2, which I'll have a separate video on, is quite different from Paper 1, and so I've got a little bit more to say about Paper 2. Paper 1 is the slightly more straightforward. You could say the kind of theory paper, and that's often how it's discussed. You've got your Paper 1 as your theory paper, and Paper 2 as your practical paper, which is fine to think about it, but Paper 1 is interesting because it doesn't just contain what you might consider to be the pure computer science heavy theory. We've also got the first topic, which is still on programming, is still on algorithms, which you might expect to only be in paper two, but actually appears just in written form in paper one, which is a written exam, whereas paper two is on the computer. Now there are five topics which are going to come up in paper one. Topic six is left for paper two, and topics two to five are what I've just described as kind of a heavy, pure theory topics. And there's a fair bit of content here to learn, of course. Topic one is the slightly more applied version, but again, is still answered on paper and it still contains aspects of theory, of course. One aspect which is interesting in paper one, which I associate much more with subjects like English and history, potentially, where actually Edixel are gonna tell you what topic each question is assessing. And there are going to be five questions in the exam with lots of parts within those questions. But each question is gonna be focused on one topic area only. And like I said, it will tell you which one is being assessed. So there's not this sort of mixing and matching, which you occasionally see in other exam boards and in other subjects, where you've almost got to sort of, you know, try and guess roughly what part of the spec the question's asking about. Here, you are told, and so you knowing these topic names and what comes within these topics is really, really valuable because it allows you to eliminate potential answers which actually aren't being assessed in that part of your paper. For a theory paper, knowing the content inside out is the most important thing. Now, like I say, this is an hour and 30 minutes and is worth 75 marks. And so that gives you 15 minutes of checking time or spare time if you are trying to aim for a minute a mark, which is what I would suggest, generally speaking. Now, basics, um, in case you're going into it very soon, make sure you come to the exam hall with a black pen, pencil, rubber, ruler, etc. Elixir do like diagrams. There are a fair, there are usually a couple of drawing questions where you've got to kind of connect up things and maybe draw a network topology, those sort of things. So a rubber is valuable, as is a pencil. Now, calculators are not allowed in this paper. There'll be some maths for sure. Sometimes you'll just be asked to give an expression not actually calculate the, the answer, you're just sort of giving your workings out, but for simple maths, you will have to do it yourself. And the exam itself, apart from the oddity about it telling you the topic, is very typical, mix of multiple choice, and then short written answers, medium answers, and there'll be usually one six marker, which is an extended response question, where you are discussing a topic, often it's ethics, but not always, and you are marked not just on your content, but how you are presenting, how clear your answer is, how coherent your answer is. The phrase often used is a sustained line of reasoning. Your answer's got to flow and connect up and be logical. It's not assessing you on spelling and grammar, although your clarity could be it could affect this sustained line of reasoning. Exam technique is a big focus for standard papers like this, knowing how much to write, knowing what command words are what. And I have got a video on exam technique, which is separate from anything edX or specific. I'll link that in the description. Now the exam is roughly 60% just recording theory and 40% applying theory. And both of those contain content which is often associated with paper two, which is content on programming and algorithms. So you might be asked questions about the theory of programming. You might be asked to apply some knowledge by filling in a trace table or completing a flowchart or pseudocode that is assessed in paper one and you should be aware. 
Now, how would I recommend you get ready for this exam? Well, it's like many, many other exams. It's not uh, rocket science. You've got to essentially know all the content, right? And all the content is listed in a document called the specification. I would suggest you get to know this for all your subjects. It's a very long PDF on the exam board's website. Most of it is not relevant for students, but the subject content part is really useful because it tells you exactly what is going to come up. And I mentioned if you can know the topic areas inside out, you know the subtopics, you know the different terms they're going to use, that's going to put you in a very strong position to answer all the questions well. Now, of course, a lot of it is going to be revising, and I've got a separate video, if I can plug another one, on revision and how to revise computer science. But part of that revision, after you've gone through the content, should be doing past papers and practicing these, especially the applied questions. And the exam technique should be a key focus. So when you're marking using for mark schemes, look at what exact points you need to make and focus on the command words of the questions. Words like describe and state and discuss and explain. You've got to know the subtle differences between those. And my video on exam technique will go through that. Now, speaking of my videos, uh, just to continue this long advert, well, I've got a playlist which covers all of the content for paper one. It will be linked in the description. Occasionally, I'll update it, so this picture may well be out of date quite quickly. So the playlist linked below will be the, the latest version and we'll have all the videos which are up to date. Now, depending on where you're at, either the playlist will be good for learning the content, you might have missed certain topics, you might have forgotten certain things, but ultimately, they're also there to be useful, hopefully, for revision, even last minute, night before revision, hopefully it will be useful because a lot of content, even going over it fairly shortly before your exam, often works and is often useful. Um, I would suggest taking notes, especially if you're, you've got the luxury of time, or if I put it in your own words and try and use them later on, it's very easy just to mindlessly copy what's on my screen and not necessarily use it or think too much about it. This playlist, by the way, is labelled ICP2 because this is the official spec code of the current Edexcel course. If you're watching this years down the line, it might have been updated, so check for current code on Edexcel's website. Apart from that, I haven't got much else to say for paper one. Hopefully your preparation goes really well and the exam, when you come to do it, also goes great. So good luck.